Hello Chess fans, I'm Grandmaster Misha Pap and I'll be presenting a new series. Um, I'll be explaining how to make uh, right decisions in critical positions in middle game. So what it means, you might ask, uh, how to make the right decision. Isn't every uh, move in a chess game a decision? Yes, of course, that's right. But uh, moves and our decisions in some positions are more important. For example, uh, in some positions you have, you might have some simple moves uh, which don't disturb the balance too much. So you might choose this one or that one and nothing happens. I mean, nothing special. But how you react and what you decide in those critical positions in a chess game, that's very important. And uh, usually and almost always, almost always, who makes it, uh, it decides the outcome of the game. So, who is making better decisions in those critical positions during the game, he will usually win the game. So, um, what I want to uh, achieve with this uh, series, what I want to present, uh, I would like to explain uh, for the club players how to um, improve your uh, understanding of those positions and to help you to make uh, better uh, decisions. So also uh, it will improve your overall uh, positional play because uh, uh, making a right decision is uh, basically it takes up almost all your uh, chess skills and uh, it's quite important to incorporate uh, several factors so let's say that you already know what is the evaluation uh, you know already what is your idea in next few moves or you have a plan even better yes and you have uh, mm, let's say fairly good calculation skills so you can calculate what's coming you just need to make decision what to do <laughs> but of course first uh, a few words about uh, critical position so it's very important to recognize those uh, i don't know if uh, some of you noticed but from my uh, from my own uh, uh, practice uh, as a player and as a coach i'm basically um, uh, working as a chess coach since I was uh, 18, 19 years old, so I have quite uh, <laughs> a long uh, teaching experience over 20 years. So, in my own experience, there are many uh, players who simply uh, don't know how to recognize critical position and they are simply not aware of uh, that position when it comes in the game and that's quite important in chess and for your overall performance and of course for the results so critical position is basically uh, every position where you have possible exchange of pieces possible uh, change in the pound structure so exchange of pounds uh, and also you have a critical position each time after some forced line so when the first line ends, you have a new fresh position which you need to evaluate again. You need to take a new look and make a new decisions how to proceed. So that's also critical position. And also you might say that critical position is also 
position after some series of moves. Maybe it's not uh, like forced line, maybe it was some sequence of moves or it was a series of exchanges and then you arrive into some uh, new position which has a let's say a new character. So uh, first of all recognizing a critical position is very important and then to make uh, a right decision of course. So uh, what I mean by that I will try to illustrate with few um, examples here just briefly before uh, we dive into into the full uh, full videos and full series because this is just a, just a, an introduction so uh, first example is from the taken from the game Alyahin against Podgorny classical example maybe very well known for some of you uh, and uh, throughout the series I will use uh, some less known or completely unknown uh, games and examples so just to avoid that uh, that you just say okay I saw this before so be sure that uh, you will see new positions and new games throughout the series this is just for intro purpose so in this position Alehin well, so here we have a position after knight f6 Alehin is to move as we can see this bishop is attacked uh, but actually there is also pin during uh, along the a file and the rook might be hanged so white needs to decide what to do should he somehow unpin maybe moving this bishop somewhere to uh, defend this rook and then make a threat to take on before or maybe he can think about sacrificing the exchange immediately for example take on before queen a1 and he might say okay that queen is not very well placed and queen might have some problems on a1 um, but probably that is just not enough so um, white can also play some quiet move like queen c2 or queen b3 to defend on c3 and to just proceed with normal play he can also try maybe a move like bishop b3 but of course if you want to play bishop b3 you need to know what you're going gonna do after bishop c3 b c queen c3 because now this is a pawn sacrifice and uh, it seems like white doesn't have the full compensation here so what Eliakin did he just played d5 So d5 and black doesn't have so much choice he took if he takes with the knight then probably white can just take e d5 is only move then probably a b4 is good queen a1 and then queen b3 is possible idea and now queen can feel queen on a1 can feel the uh, the problem bishop f3 for example but then after move like uh, bishop g5 queen is exposed and white wins this queen on a1 trying a move like knight d4 is not helping in this line because queen e3 is check and then white picks up the queen and also if queen a1 bishop f1 white uh, has uh, advantage okay uh, black is playing bishop before but still here with uh, queen uh, and two bishops so white will be able to organize a dangerous attack so white is probably much better so black plays ed5 he played ed5 and now um, uh, shows his idea a before taking the bishop and sacrificing exchange queen a1 and here uh, uh, Aliakin shows his uh, idea knight d2 very well played 
so idea with queen b3 doesn't work in this case because black has bishop f3 and if some move like bishop g5 there is knight d4 and there is no check on e3 so this is bad for white so in this case uh, Aliakin showed his idea knight d2 very well because of this threat knight b3 black is forced to take we need to check now what to do knight e7 uh, moving the king is not so comfortable for black obviously now already white has several options but he opted for i mean he can also maybe just play queen b5 and take on b7 of course uh, with full compensation but just a moment uh, white played rook e1 and now it's quite uh, clear that black is in trouble what to do i mean uh, knight is hanging playing knight e4 doesn't help and playing knight fg8 is simply uh, too bad to be considered so black just played castle knight b3 queen is hanging the only move is queen a6 exchange and rook e7 after this sequence of moves we have a new critical position and here we can say safely that white has big advantage and he managed to win relatively easily so you might ask me what's the whole uh, problem what's the point this is fairly easy <laughs> maybe but uh, the point is that in this position uh, in this critical position white Aliahin, uh played d5 because he realized that after uh, exchange sacrifice he'll have full compensation for the sacrifice to tear. And here is the uh, next example, uh, again from one of Aliakin games, but that's uh, less important for us. We are uh, in pursuit of critical positions and right decisions. So the last move was uh, Queen D1. We had some exchange on D file, exchange of rooks, obviously, and White took Queen D1, probably. Uh, a wrong idea and here uh, we have a critical decision uh, obviously uh, in this position we have uh, less pieces on the board and uh, next move uh, obviously is not deciding the game or something like that but uh, let's see what happened uh, first of all black has uh, i mean a good position he has a good central uh, position of the queen pounds on f5 and e4 and black has comfortable position we can say that is he better well it's hard to say he can't uh, go rook d8 i mean he can just play some move like b6 maybe uh, trying to prevent spawn majority to uh, advance he might even push f4 he can also try some move like rook e8 or rook c8 so there are several moves at least to consider but let's see what uh, Aliahin did so in this critical position he made a decision to play queen c3 so what is the point i mean he's attacking on a3 and because b4 is also uh, sort of uh, uh, under uh, attack uh, white cannot just push a4 so white has to defend pawn on a3 and the only um, only idea is just to defend it by queen c1 or queen a1 playing rook e3 is probably not uh, not so convenient maybe black will be able to 
continue with queen b2 and then harassing uh, white later on with possible ideas like f4 and also i mean yates uh, being uh, um, a weaker player here he just probably happily played queen c1 just to exchange queens and enter in uh, maybe just uh, maybe he thought it's just easily drawn endgame but Alekhin had a different idea, different plans, so he exchanged queens. All, all of this is part of his decision, and now rook d8. He takes the d file. And now you can also find this example in his book. He uh, explained this uh, in details uh, that he had a plan to. Uh, uh, come with the king to the center to push f4 at some point and uh, black will have pleasant uh, advantage it's not a big deal we might say even from today's perspective even we can maybe say that with uh, perfect play white should be able to make draw but uh, on the other hand i think this was a very good practical decision and very strong uh, idea by by Eichen because he realized that his practical chances are probably the best in this kind of position so with queen c3 he practically forced the white to exchange queens and then he takes d5 just a few more moves king f7 c5 of course white is uh, using his own uh, majority maybe he's going to push c6 so it's not uh, so easy to to fight for an advantage at black but king f6 bishop c4 bishop c8 very instructive and g5 b5 f4 rook 2 i mean rook is very active on the second rank and rook will be able to harass uh, those pawns, also to limit white's king. And also, a retreat of the bishop to c8 was another uh, important decision. So here, uh, here we can say that we have a new critical position. Uh, playing simply bishop c4 is uh, uh, entering probably in a equal or we might say it's popular to say equalish uh, endgame so probably it will end in a draw but uh, Alekhin made a very very nice decision again this is critical because we have possible exchange of pieces obviously so bishop c8 uh, and bishop on c8 might even stop this pawn and also his entering with the king with the rook so rook b2 yes takes takes and after king e5 we, we can see that uh, his plan is working he has uh, king on e5 well centralized pawns on e4 and f4 which are quite dangerous rook on b2 amazingly uh, strong and of course bishop on c8 is uh, stopping this uh, c pawn so if you imagine a position without uh, bishops on the board after simply c6 uh, white will be quite would be quite comfortable and black would have to think about uh, that uh, pass pawn so here uh, alekhin managed to obtain advantage bc6 rook takes if bishop, if pawn takes as i said uh, that pawn is not going uh, too far so rook c6 but then just bishop b6 and you can see that rook is perfectly placed on b2 uh, holding this b pawn and also now white uh, black has some uh, threats like f3 3 bishop d1 rook b1 threatening bishop b3 
and now e3 and white is in big trouble bishop g4 black is just winning here so if rook moves there is e2 with completely winning position after h3 bishop h5 white just resigned so uh, we can see that in this example uh, black made uh, two very important decisions so first decision was when he decided to play here uh, queen c3 so queen c3 and he was expecting move like queen c1 or queen a1 just to exchange queens overtake the d file bring the king to the center take the advantage and now another very important decision not to exchange bishops of course it's not always the best idea in similar position <laughs> simply not to exchange but in this example it was very clever and then he managed to win with of course uh, a very strong play and some mistakes from from white let's check another example here we have a new example uh, again a very well known and classical example twinning against capablanca famous uh, game from our tournament in this position last move was queen d3 white is just uh, developing his queen uh, in passing we might say attacking on a6 and uh, so white is preparing his favorite uh, setup so today we know that Alekhin really liked this idea this pawn structure so preparing rook a1 f3 and e4 and so on and so on with some initiative in the center and maybe possibly on the king side so Capablanca who was a brilliant chess player big uh, champion um, very very well known uh, and famous player and he didn't lose so many games in his chess career some say that he lost only 35 games in his whole career which might be possible because in those days uh, people didn't play so many games in so many tournaments but even such a brilliant player and a great champion like Capablanca can make mistakes so in this position he should play some move like knight c7 and so on and then because of constant idea of cd4 and this uh, tension in the center it will be much harder for white if possible at all to push f3 e4 maybe he will uh, resort to some other ideas but here Capablanca makes very uh, instructive mistake and big positional mistake c4 so he's uh, blocking the king side now uh, queen side now and uh, he's sort of uh, giving a white free hands on the king side after queen c2 already white is dynamically better because he has better prospects and let's see just uh, what happened knight b8 rook a1 knight c6 so this idea is very very long uh capablanca has the idea to just go knight a5 knight b3 and pick up this pawn on a4 but but Vinic was not uh, really bothered about all that just proceed proceeds with his own idea f3 knight b3 okay all all this is nice from capablanca probably he was uh, he was aware that he is uh, taking a big risk or at least some risk uh, using so much time for the whole maneuver with the knight and just to pick up one pawn but probably he made that decision uh, consciously i mean he just thought okay i will take pawn and then let's see what happens e4 white has a uh, very strong initiative strong attack 
Queen a4, I mean taking on e4 looks very scary to fight against such uh, white center is probably not a good idea but also allowing e5 is also not much better queen f2 very good uh why queen f2 black was probably threatening knight c5 and then of course black would be happy to exchange queens and then if white plays for example f4 knight c5 some move and then knight d3 is coming and black <laughs> will be out of trouble actually he would just claim that he's much better with this pawn so uh, queen f2 g3 and f4 and uh, white was starting to crash through and he won won the game let's check until the end what happened so here uh, with help of some uh, calculation he played bishop e3 uh, of course he, we might uh, also notice that here we have another critical position but that's already end game and here you need precise calculation with precise calculation he just managed to um, execute this idea this winning idea and now there is no perpetual check white is winning black resigned so what was important here important was that uh, black made a conscious decision to block the queen side with c4 um, and uh, initiate this long maneuver with the knight to pick up the pawn on a4 but that was a big mistake because it was too slow here we have another example um, this is from my own game of course i can't uh, compare with those uh, giants from our chess history and great champions but uh, of course I learned something from them and uh, this is one uh, example from my own uh, uh, practice so I played against uh, some international master and here after c4 black needs to decide what to do as you can see we have possible change of the pound structure possible exchange of pounds and as you already know this is critical position so black needs to decide what to do if he wants to take on e4 on c4 maybe to push d4 what to do maybe black can also wait so there are many possibilities but uh, what I did is I just played h6 because you can see that we have uh, uh, castles on opposite sides opposite side castles and now h6 this is very indicative so now I want to sacrifice one or maybe even both pawns just to open the lines for attack and just to speed up my attack on the white king because in such positions it's uh, almost always question who is faster and uh, I don't want to uh, wait and see how he's building on the on the queen side with maybe moves like a3 b4 at some point so h6 very sharp very very um, uh, dynamic play by black so queen e3 white uh, hesitates he he doesn't want to take the invitation doesn't want to take the pawn but now d4 uh, d4 with the tempo which is uh, also part of the plan for black because now if uh, black wants to attack on the king side uh, we also know that uh, having a stable center or blocked center helps if you want to initiate uh, attack or some operations on the on the flank so now white takes boldly 
g5. So I am insisting that he takes another pawn and opens uh, the lines for my uh, rooks. So I want to go after white king in the full power. So here he just played queen h3, rook h8, queen g3 and g4. And now I am ready just to go rook g8, maybe knight h5 and to continue attack. So as you can see, uh, one pawn more or less in this position is not so much important. What is important is that I'm uh, conducting this uh, kingside attack and I want to really blast open position and uh, get to his king. Okay, fd1 and now knight h5. Uh, I didn't want to wait too long. I'm just forcing him to take on g4. If he doesn't take, there are many ideas. Maybe knight f4, maybe queen h4 is coming. So white, I mean, he can try to avoid that, but uh, it doesn't help too much. So he took boldly at the second pawn, but now you can see the full full power of the rooks. Rooks are just uh, where they should be on h and g file attacking with tremendous power and uh, it's no uh, surprise that the uh, game didn't last too long. Queen f3, knight f4, there is no good defense, g3 now check and rook f8, pawn f2 is falling, uh, the white position is breaking down and everything is falling like, uh, yes, you can say house of cards right now so queen g4 okay other moves don't help too much and now i found a nice idea to finish the game rook h2 and white resigned so all in all uh, this is what is uh, um, what i will be talking about in this series about making a decision in a critical moment in the game and of course i will uh, try to explain the best as i can how you can uh, improve your understanding and how you can uh, recognize the critical position and how you can make uh, the right decision which will help you to win hopefully many games